Now we'll move on to discuss the blood vessels in specific regions of the body, beginning with the arteries and veins of the head and neck. Blood flow in the body can be divided into the pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit. The pulmonary vessels include the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary veins, as well as the pulmonary arterioles which surround the alveoli of the lungs. The flow of blood to the lungs for oxygenation is known as a pulmonary circuit. It's as follows. Deoxygenated blood is returned to the right atrium from the body and is then pumped into the right ventricle. Next, this blood from the right ventricle is pumped through the pulmonary semilunar valve into the lung via the pulmonary arteries. Within the lungs, the blood releases carbon dioxide, takes up oxygen, and leaves the lungs through the pulmonary veins. This lateral view shows the major arteries of the neck and face region. The brachiocephalic trunk delivers blood into the right common carotid artery. At the carotid sinus, it divides into the internal carotid and the external carotid. From the external carotid, arteries such as the facial nerve arises. At the back or posterior side of the skull is the occipital artery. Passing through the vertebra is the vertebral artery. The major arteries of the neck originate from the aortic arch on the left side of the body and the brachiocephalic trunk on the right. The three main arteries originating from the aortic arch are the brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. These three arteries deliver blood to the head, neck, shoulders, and upper limbs. The right common carotid artery and the right subclavian ascend from the brachiocephalic trunk itself. The subclavian arteries. These arteries supply blood to the upper limbs, chest wall, shoulders, brain, and spinal cord. As the subclavian artery passes laterally from the chest, it gives rise to the following. Number one, the thyrocervical trunk. This supplies the muscle and tissue of the neck shoulder and upper back. Number two, the internal thoracic artery. This supplies the pericardium and the anterior chest. Number three, the vertebral artery. This supplies blood to the brain and spinal cord. Outside of the thoracic cavity, the subclavian becomes the axillary artery, which supplies the muscles of the pectoral region and the axilla. Eventually, in the region of the axilla, the axillary artery becomes the brachial artery, which supplies blood to the upper limb. Major arteries of the head and neck include the carotid arteries. These supply blood to the upper neck, face, skull, and the brain. The common carotid artery at the level of the larynx divides into the internal and external carotid artery. At the base of the internal carotid artery is the carotid sinus. This contains the baroreceptors involved in blood pressure regulation. The external artery supplies blood to the neck, pharynx, larynx, the lower jaw, and the face through the facial artery. The internal carotid delivers blood to the brain along with the vertebral arteries. At the level of the optic nerve, the internal carotid artery divides into the ophthalmic artery, anterior cerebral artery, and the middle cerebral artery. The arteries of the brain. The major arteries of the brain include the anterior cerebral, the middle cerebral, and the posterior cerebral, and the regions they supply blood to are depicted in this image. The major arteries of the brain include the anterior, middle, and posterior cerebral arteries. There is an anterior cerebral artery, or ACA, located on either side of the brain and they supply blood to the medial portion of the frontal lobes and the superior medial parietal lobes. The middle cerebral artery, or MCA, supplies blood to the majority of the cerebrum, including the majority of the lateral surface of the hemisphere, portions of the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe, and the basal ganglia and internal capsule. The posterior cerebral artery, or PCA, supplies blood to the occipital lobe of the brain and it arises near the intersection 
of the posterior communicating artery and the basilar artery. The brain has a unique vascular structure known as the circle of Willis or the cerebral arterial circle. This is depicted in this inferior view of the brain vessels. The cerebral arterial circle is made up of the anterior cerebral artery, the anterior communicating, the posterior communicating, and the posterior cerebral. This encircles the infundibulum and the pituitary gland. The anterior cerebral, posterior cerebral, anterior communicating, and the posterior communicating arteries make up the circle of Willis. At this circle of blood vessels, the carotid arteries and the basilar artery are interconnected. This interconnection allows the brain to be supplied from more than one major source, and this ensures that the blood supply to the brain can continue if there's a blockage in either the carotid or the vertebral blood flow. The tremendous blood supply of the brain is delivered through the following veins to the brachiocephalic and eventually the superior vena cava. Blood from the temporal region is drained by the temporal vein. There are major sinuses in the back or posterior region of the brain, the superior sagittal sinus, the inferior sagittal sinus, and the straight sinus. These deliver the venous blood to the sigmoid sinus. Blood from the occipital region is drained through the occipital vein. Blood from the vertebral region and other regions of the brain is drained through the vertebral vein. The venous drainage of the brain's cerebral hemispheres includes the superficial cerebral veins, which then deliver the blood into the superior and inferior sagittal sinuses. The sinuses converge at the sigmoid sinus, and they exit the skull as the internal jugular vein. The vertebral vein drains the posterior surface of the skull and the spinal cord. These then empty into the brachiocephalic vein. The superficial veins of the head and neck include the following, the temporal, the facial, and the maxillary. The temporal and maxillary veins drain into the external jugular, whereas the facial vein drains into the internal jugular vein. The external jugular vein empties into the subclavian vein just posterior to the clavicle. The external jugular vein is palpable in healthy individuals and the pulse itself in the external jugular can sometimes be visible at the base of the neck. These veins eventually deliver the blood from the head, neck, chest, and shoulders into the superior vena cava.